Yeah, my dream was always Keanu Reeves and uh, Sam Jackson. I thought that would have been amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but when did you tell the story about, yeah. about the rights and everything oh, else? And did... Yeah, a little bit. You might know more, Steve, but no, that sorry. basically, and you have the direct from the yep. um, source story, but yeah, Steve should tell it. We, we all have strong feelings about this. This title is very close to us. Well, you know, I, like a lot of you, I was concerned about it too. And uh, I was in an airport and I met Keanu in a uh, really shop in the airport. And once I got past my little fanboy moment with him, uh, I introduced myself and, and I said, I'm the guy who played Spike Spiegel in Cowboy Bebop, and I heard that you've got rights to this thing and you may be playing Spike. He goes, Oh, yeah, dude, I don't know who you are. I've seen the whole show. I love the show. Yeah, man, we really, really want to make this movie. And first of all, I kind of had to stop myself and go, like, ah! <laughs> uh, so it, right there, it sort of turned, turned me the opposite direction. When I saw how passionate he was about this, he, he's really into it. And his concern at the time was that uh, the script was so beautifully written, however, it was going to be so expensive to make that he was afraid we'd never get greenlit. And I think that's one of the problems, that's one of the reasons it's been delayed for so long. Uh, he said it would be like, half a billion dollars to, to do all of the effects and everything. It may be more possible now because technology has improved. I just don't know what the right situation is at this point. And the other thing was that he was afraid that uh, if it did get greenlit, it would take so long that he wouldn't be able to do his own stunts. And that was something that was super important to him. He really wanted to be able to do his own stunts as Spike. And, and when I heard that there was that kind of passion, that kind of investment in the movie, uh, I was okay with him playing it. And uh, Watanabe-san was also uh, on the books as the executive producer for it. And so with his guidance, as long as he was able to steer the ship, I thought it could come out to be an amazing film. Yeah. And especially with the technology now that we've got, it could be an unbelievable feature film. But if they do it, I just pray that they do it right. Yeah. So. I just hope they don't drown it in special effects. Yeah. That's, that's my concern, super fast edits and just making it a ride rather than a story. I'd really love to see characters yeah. yeah. flesh out. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for some reason I feel like that's always been in trying to, to to create, you know, or trans transform something from animation to film, that it's there's been so few successes in terms of an anime and getting it into Westernized cinema to make it work, like they're doing a Ghost in the Shell movie now, you know. And I just hope that it's good, you know. I just, yeah. I just want it to be good, regardless. I want it to be true to the characters. I also don't care who plays them as long as it's a good story. It's true to the characters, and it breathes. It exactly. has that moment of breathing. You know, there would be two things I'd like to do in the movie. First, I'd like to narrate. Oh. The film. Oh. Crapping himself in the seat in the restaurant. 